the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This is Mark. First off, I want to sort of apologize for something I said during the last podcast. Um, I got a little bit worked up in the last podcast, which is probably a little bit out of character. I hope it is. I don't want to be that guy, that pundit um, anymore. I've done that for a couple podcasts now, and I think I'm finished being the pundit trying to explain world events. Um, What I want to apologize for is at some point toward the end, I said that we should be ashamed of ourselves. And of course, that's attack. And my, my intention is always to attack the ego, not to attack who you really are. But the language of attack is useless, and I apologize for, for saying that. Um, you know, we're all doing our best. I know you are, and I know that every single one of us alive today is a good person, really trying to do our best to deal with a very challenging situation. Um, we have our responsibilities. We have, you know, we have our children or not. We have relationships or not. We have jobs or not. Either way, no matter what, all of us are suffering. All of us are going through, are giving everything, and we're good people. And there's so much good about you. And sometimes I think, um, maybe I may, I I err on the side of of because I'm, tr- you know, I'm not trying to change anyone. I don't want to change anyone at all. I. You know, I, I, w- w- what's good about you is is pr- already perfect. You know, God made us all perfect and complete. And I think the reason I talk about all this stuff and write about this stuff is only for, for one simple reason, that, that I think a lot of people are suffering. And I found out through this, through this spiritual practice how to live in a way that you don't suffer. And it's not like anything is wrong with, with anyone. You know, um, if, if a person is is living within the thought system of ego, that's normal. Everyone, I mean, almost everyone is in the world. So it's, I'm not trying to add an additional burden on, on you to say, like, you're wrong about something. You should change and listen to me. In fact, there's no point arguing any of this stuff. You know, no one's going to take away your right to think the way that however you want to and live however you want to, and it's perfectly okay, right? So we're not talking about that. I'm sorry if sometimes it sounds like that. Speaking of everyone doing their best and trying to cope with a very difficult situation. I wanted to talk today about relationships during this time. Mainly, I guess, like marriage relationships, you know, um, family relationships also, including children. The relationships that matter because now we, we have to live with these people and we have to coexist almost all the time. And a lot of us haven't been living that way. I have been living that way for many years, coexisting with my partner and with my children almost all the time. And um, so I know, you know, I know I can imagine a lot of people out there are going through some challenges with their relationships. And I know, I guess I've heard some people talking about a lot of articles about that and people posting about that. And I think, you know, it's, it's really interesting when, when maybe before all this happened, a lot of times in, in relationships and marriages, it was kind of okay to keep some certain things from your partner to kind of not not let it all hang out, <laughs> let it all hang loose with your partner. I think maybe there were some things that were unspoken, um, and it was kind of okay because you spend a few hours a day together, you watch TV, you hang out, and you know now it's a situation where if you really can't be yourself. There could be a lot of tension, I would imagine, uh, just being home, uh, you know, with your, with a partner who maybe doesn't accept you for exactly how you are, who doesn't know everything that maybe they should know. Um, maybe you're putting pressure on some on your partner to be to to live up to your expectations as well, and that's making it hard for that person. I think there's probably, for sure, a lot of worrying about money right now. I mean, let's let's look at what the situation is in most marriages, or I say marriage meaning. Not necessarily the license that a man and woman get married, but I'm saying like you live with someone um, for the purpose of sort of coexisting and having a life together and maybe having children and so forth. So we'll, we'll call that marriage. I, I don't like that word. I also don't, don't like to use the word, you know, partners, but, you know, relation, let's call it your relationship, your primary relationship, right? So in a primary relationship of any kind, um, you know, money is always a huge topic. It's always... The, probably the biggest worry, if, if it's not health issues, it's probably money. 
you know, if not the current situation, you're worried about the future with your jobs and with money. And now that became very real. You just, you have no idea of the future. You have, you have expenses maybe built up from expectations of how things were, but now things aren't that way anymore. And you're not sure if it can go back to how it was before and what's going to come next and what the world's going to look like and so forth. So I, I can imagine that a, that a lot of your, your thinking, you know, and some of mine as well, to be honest, um, is about money because you're trying to maintain those commitments you've made and those expectations you have for your life. And that's going to put strain on a relationship, of course. And, you know, everyone is going through identity issues right now. I think we're changing on a daily basis because a lot of the things we thought were real about our lives, the structures we had in place, the jobs and the status and all that, it's just kind of being taken away slowly or just isn't real at this very moment. And so your partner and your and you and your partner are going to have identity issues to work through. And you're going to and that's a journey. That's going to take some, you know, some days are, are, are harder than others. Some days you say things you maybe don't mean the next day because you have to kind of try it out and see how it feels. Your opinions, your approach toward life, your everything, you know, we're questioning everything and that's going, and, and my point is this, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting to a point here actually, that this is why I think that for relationships to last and not to be overly dramatic, but let's face it, not every relationship lasts, right? Not every marriage lasts. So if, I think if we want our relationships to last, I think now is the time that we have to be able to accept our partners unconditionally, let them go through what they need to go through as an, just observe it and just be there as a person who they can talk to. And I think we also have to be totally honest with, with our partners and, and expect the same thing back. I mean, I mean, real honest. I just, I, I said something that's kind of difficult for anyone to do, which is total acceptance and total honesty, because you might not like what you hear. You might not like something you found out about your partner that you didn't know. But at the same time, I think if you can't get to that place, you're not going to be very satisfied with with the living situation. You know, we need space. We don't have much of our own space anymore. Um, a lot of, I mean, if you are in a family or if we do have a, have a relationship. And so it's, it becomes even more important that you can be yourself within the relationship and not have to, to change how you are. My, my partner, Zuzana, was talking about... Um, something she was reading online where people were, were laughing about how when their their partners are talking with people at work, how you know the, how they're different, how they're, they have a different persona and they say different things than they wouldn't say from what they wouldn't say at home. And yeah, that's part of what I'm talking about. You know, can we become more authentic um, you know, with our partners, with our children, and with our with our colleagues and, and business partners and customers and so forth. And this is what ends up happening. And I've, I've been through this. I mean, I used to have that sort of work voice and that home voice and all this. And as I started working from home, that just kind of slowly goes away. And you, be, you find this tone where you talk to everyone kind of in the same way. And that's wonderful because it's authentic and it's genuine. And that's how you build solid work relationships. Um, and, you know, why do we have to play these roles? We, we shouldn't have to play these roles anymore because now our life is going to be, it's really interesting. Now, for a long time, who knows how long, maybe this is the new normal that we, we, we live at, we work pretty much from home or maybe, maybe we get an office off site if we have small children or whatever. But, you know, we spend a lot more time with our families because we're not going to be stuck, you know, nine to five in the office. It's going to be more about what we get done in a week versus how many hours we put in, which is a fantastic, if this comes true, this is a fantastic improvement in our lives. Believe me. No one watching your hours, more more so watching what you actually accomplish. Anyway, back to my topic, um, relationships. Okay, so there's that. You know, so you're dealing with, with this kind of perfect storm of having to be together all the time in a really difficult situation where you're actually worried about your lives anyway. You're worried about money. You're worried about your health. And the differences between you might start to be, be exposed a little bit the more you spend time and the more you talk. And this is why it's absolutely essential that you have to, we have to learn. If we're going to have relationships that work in this new era, we're going to have to, I think, um, learn to accept unconditionally, to love unconditionally. And anyone who's, who's um, 
read my some of my work and, and, and heard me talk before, I, I don't put a limit on that. And I'm not going to get into, into the sexual stuff on this podcast, I guess. Um, that's probably not f- forefront anyway when everybody's kind of locked down. And I don't know that there's too much happening in terms of, of um, sexual adventures right now um, in terms of, you know, new people and things like this. But what I mean to say is that I don't think we, we can draw the line anywhere. When you talk about unconditional love, I mean, do you love me or not? And if you love me, you got to love the whole me. And you got to let me live my life and go through my stuff. And I've got to do the same thing for you. The only caveat is that if, if I offer that to you, I do expect perfect honesty. And because if, because if you offer that kind of acceptance and you, just, you still don't get honesty from someone, that's, that really doesn't feel very good. Um, so, you know, this, this takes time. It's, it's a process where you're opening up and, and learning to talk through things maybe more than ever before. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone had their relationships figured out. You know, this is an area of life where we don't really see what other people are going through because it's kind of private. Um, I think it's too private. I think we don't talk about families and relationships enough. And it's always been a very, very big deal, a big part of our lives. And now so an even more important part of our lives. You know, I think I think it would be really useful to use this time to talk about the meaning of life with your partner, with your kids, to talk about your ideas towards spirituality or whatever that may be, to talk about things that mean something. Because the more the more we can do that, the more we can be rooted in something that's permanent and lasting um, and not so obsessed with you know, holding on to our, our homes, paying our mortgage, all these things, some of that is probably going to have to go because people have chosen to panic over the flu. And so now the economy is going to be a mess. And I know the government's trying to make us feel like it's going to be normal, but but the economy, the actual economy is kind of being destroyed because nobody's really doing their normal jobs and, and, and so forth. And I guess that had to happen. And that's what we chose to do, right? That's what people in the world chose to do. But now that means there's going to be some changes and it becomes even even more important than ever to be to, to be rooted in something that's unchanging and true. And then you get into like thinking about, well, what's what is true about me? You know, what is the love between, um, you know, me and my partner um, in my relationship? Where What is the truth about the relationship? And. The truth about any relationship can only be the, the, the real love, the unconditional love that you feel, that you experience, that you rely upon as the foundation of your relationship. Because if the relationship is based on expectations, like you have to make this much money, you have to never do this or you have to do that, it's going to become just too much work and it's going to start to implode, I think, these kinds of relationships now. Because we're not as distracted before as, you know, with all those fun bells and whistles and all those things we can do in the restaurants we can go to and all this stuff. When we have to just actually spend time together with our partners, I think, um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's, going to, it's going to reveal the truth of the relationship. And it's, you're going to see how much love is actually there. Can you talk about everything? Can you not argue? And the only reason for any kind of argument is because you're not accepting something. You're resisting something. Um, that's where attack and argument come from, trying to change someone for some external purpose. So, you know, can we shift our relationships so that there is no role-playing, there is no external purposes so much anymore that, that love is the purpose, the relationship and the thing, the feelings you have, the commitments you have with the person, the total acceptance, unconditional. I mean, this is the most wonderful, uh, I mean, this is the only way to do a relationship. Um, and I know that that's not always possible, f- it, I'm sure, in your life, because probably you, you may feel like you didn't meet the right person. You're not with the right person who would offer you that. And the thing is, I don't think this is kind of negotiable. I think that you have a right to be yourself and to be accepted and to be loved for who you are, because you're pretty great, right? I mean, you know deep down that you are lovable and you are doing your best, and you miss the mark sometimes, like we all do. But it doesn't really help. You're, you know, you're beating yourself up enough. The voice in your head is beating yourself up for what you should be doing better or whatever. You don't need 
your partner to be adding to to pile on. Um, so you know, even though you may feel like it's not possible, I would say just go first and just just do this, you know, because if there's a chance of being happy in relationships now. You know, it's not going to be by all those distractions anymore. It's going to have to be the actual relationship, the, the, the reality of it. And now we're getting into like, wow, what, what an opportunity that is to use this time as a way to strengthen a relationship. And, and once you do this, and I'm talking from experience that I have this kind of relationship and I've had for four years with my partner, and you don't go back to anything else. It's, it's a process to get there to where you, it's baby steps. There are times that you, you do have a hard time with something that you're told or you're not sure whether you should say something or whether you can really accept something or try something. Um, but but to, to go down that path with that intention of unconditional love, you, you do eventually get there or you find out that you're, the other person just isn't going there and, and you, you may not be a great fit. And that might also be an outcome of this situation where as, you know, as our lives begin to crumble, the external realities of our lives, our homes and things that we can't sustain, the relationship itself might have to go. But the worst thing we could do in that situation is to start over again someday with someone else and do the same kind of things as before because it's going to be the same result. Fiction and illusion is always going to be fiction and illusion. So, you know, if you want something to be lasting and permanent, even through this kind of crisis, it has to be real. And I'm talking just about being real and being honest and being open. And I think it's even possible, you know, with some caveats, some restrictions with our children. I think that we have to be able to learn to say what we mean in an appropriate way, in a loving way. And loving a love, love is always appropriate. To say things in a loving way is always appropriate. So when they say age appropriate, well, just be loving and, and, say which, and say your truth to kids, in front of kids. And I think, you know, it, I mean, it works. It works because, because you have trust, and the kids trust you, and then you have a relationship with your children. And you don't have to make threats and punishments and things like this and use guilt and shame because you're in a relationship with your children, and when you simply say, oh, it's too loud, <laughs> they say, okay, okay, Dad, sorry. That's how, I, that's how I have things with my 10-year-old daughter. And by the way, I'm, re- I'm really suffering a little bit right now because my daughter's in, in Czech Republic and she can't come to Slovakia. I don't know when I'll see her again. She's with her mom there. And, you know, we found out during this time, as I've already known for the past couple of years since it's been this situation, although I did see her every month or two before, which was hard enough as it was. But now, I don't know when I'll see her and she doesn't know when she'll see me. But my point is, because we already had established this kind of relationship, um, no matter what's happen- whatever happens between, you know, in our external realities, we always remain close in exactly the same way. So we see each other, we Skype each other, and it's, right, it's just right there. It's, it's, it's that perfect relationship where I never have to criticize or judge or condemn or shame or anything. I just accept her how she is. And 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 share with her who I am, and she shares with me who she is, and um, it's a really wonderful way to parent. I'm not saying that there aren't days when it's not difficult to be home with your family and and try to get your work done and try to do homeschooling, but man, this is teaching us so much patience, and you can get there. You can get to a place, and 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 you actually enjoy this lifestyle more so than maybe how it was before, chasing around town, driving the kids to school, going to work, being on time, being stressing about getting there on time and what time you can leave and, and all this fiction that was there before. As I said, I've been living this way for four years. Nothing has changed in my life uh, with this crisis. Really, nothing real has changed because nothing real can change. And that's the whole point of, of everything I'm talking about. And it's all inspired by, the, by A Course in Miracles. And this is, you know, I know... It sounds crazy when someone, I don't know if you even know what A Course in Miracles is, but every word in this book is true, and it's weird, and it sounds weird, and then you follow it, and it's true. And anyone who's been through A Course in Miracles comes out the other side, and, and we have to talk. We have to try to share this because it's so wonderful. And I'm not trying to change anyone. I'm not trying to criticize your relationship. I know you're doing your best. You're, you're, a, you're a wonderful 
partner or spouse, I know you're just you're doing things the way you were taught, and that's wonderful, and you're doing your best. It's just that I think a lot of people are probably suffering a little bit inside, and there's a better way if you want to stop suffering. You know, if you want to not be ill, if you want to not live with fear of finances and fear of someone leaving you or fear of someone lying to you, all that stuff goes away. And what you're left with is just this perfect peace. And you don't get sick when you're living in a state of perfect peace. Sickness is unreal. It is of the mind. All sickness is an illusion. It is the ego's um, need to believe that you are vulnerable, that your body is vulnerable to attack. And so our minds allow sickness to happen whenever we withdraw from truth, whenever we get too out of a line with truth, then there's that stress and fear that starts to accumulate, that feeling of loneliness um, when you can't communicate with, with people honestly and share who you really are. And this is when we get ill, and then the ego's like, see, this is real. Illness is real. Look at the numbers. And I'm going to stop looking at the numbers because there's some interesting ways to look at it, but ultimately... What I realized yesterday listening to Course in Miracles, I listened to the audiobook almost every day, is, you know, it doesn't make any sense to analyze fiction. <laughs> so we're looking at at this at numbers about illness, but I want to look at only truth and talk about only truth. So as I said, my my days of being a pundit about coronavirus are, are through, I, I hope, because I didn't like a lot of the stuff that I was the, the path I was going down. Um and when I talked about the rapture it was just a metaphor for what's going on, which is the death of ego, the dysfunctionality of ego. I wasn't saying there's some magic happening and these guys are partying and all this stuff. And and if you listen to it, I'm sure you hear that. But I realized that I've said some kind of emotional things lately and I apologize if I've offended anyone. And I thank you for listening to this podcast. I'd love some feedback if you'd like. My email is mark.manny at abscondo.com. And I'm going to leave you this time with a little bit of a different thing. It's going to be a song that I recorded yesterday just playing in my living room. I did a couple of videos on YouTube and just, you know, just trying to to enjoy. I felt inspired and just wanted to set the camera and have some fun. So this song is one that I wrote very recently. It's called Not In Time. Thank you for joining me in the Abscondo Podcast. I'd love to hear your feedback about your relationship, about things you might be going through. And and, um, yeah, thanks again. How many times did I try to tell you That my love for you will never fade And how many times have you cried But I tell you that everything's okay Every day I'm looking for a new me So come along with me and play Not in time but here today Maybe this is not the ending But I think it probably is Based upon what you said that last evening But if you ever change your mind Do it soon Because we're dying slowly, my love This is ending What did you find behind those reasons? And did you look beyond the mind? Sometimes the mind gets in the way, love Minds get in the way But if you ever need to find A true answer in time You're looking in the wrong direction The answer's not found in time, love But in the present How many times did you try to tell me what I need to do and simply cannot be And how many times did I hide these things from you Now in the end you'll see So today you're looking at the real me What else am I supposed to say I know it hurts but it'll be okay Maybe this is our beginning 
I mean you and me as two separate and free beings I guess we'll both end up just fine pretty soon I know you're still crying my love but this stage is ending What did you find behind those reasons and did you look beyond the mind Sometimes the mind gets in the way, love The mind gets in the way But if you ever look to find a true answer in time You're looking in the right direction, wrong direction, no oh. The answer's not found in time, love But in the present, 